In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare the DEM of your watershed for 3D printing. Essentially, what I'm going to tell you is how to convert the DEM into a format that is readable for the 3D printer that you are using. All right, there are some steps that I want to show you. Step number one is going to be using ArcGIS Pro to prepare your DEM and export it as a .png extension file, right? And step number two, you need to download a Java program, and the link to download that Java program is in the comments section of this video. Uh, step number three, we need to put that Java program in a folder uh, in your C drive. We need to make sure that we have Java installed in your computer, and eventually we're going to run that Java program. We're gonna start with step number one, uh, but I wanna tell you that if you wanna follow with this video there's a link in the comment section that link you can use that link to download the ArcGIS Pro package and if you have ArcGIS Pro package installed in your machine you can follow along and basically prepare the DEM for your watershed. All right we are here in the ArcGIS Pro environment I have two layers for you over here number one is um, uh, Mississippi River Basin Hydrologic Unit Code 06 basins or watershed. Um, these are the polygons for the, all the basins inside the entire Mississippi River Basin. And also I have one kilometer by one kilometer digital elevation model for the entire area. You can see that elevation changes from negative three meters below the sea level all the way to 4,225 meters above the sea level. So dark green over here represents the lower elevation area and obviously uh, as we go through the spectrum white's color which are represented right over here represents um, higher elevation what we're going to do is to select one of these polygons it could be any polygon and clip the entire digital elevation model based on that polygon and then create a digital elevation model of your watershed of interest and export it to be able to 3D print that one. I am going to actually go around and take a look at all these watersheds over here. You can see because of the elevation changes, you can see the possible path for the river. This is actually Missouri River Basin over here where my cursor is going. So if I click on it, you can see that that specific watershed is um, selected. And it's telling me that the name of this watershed is milk. So this is milk watershed. And this is a hydrologic unit code 06 watershed. Okay. And you have some basic information about that, the area of that, so on and so forth. I think I'm going to select this milk watershed. I'm going to remember that the name is milk. Actually, I can copy it right now. Later is going to be important for me. I am going to right click on this MRB um, HOC 06 basins and then go to um, select go to attribute tables of it okay you can see that there is one attribute called name right so the name of the watershed that we were interested in it was over here it was milk so if i can select milk out of all these names i can select that watershed how to do that you can select by attributes and we are going to here select by name and then say that the name is equal to milk. It's already over here. Uh, if it's not for you, um, type milk over here, or as we copy it, you can paste it over here. And then apply. You can see when we apply it, I'm going to move this around. When we apply it, this watershed that we selected is going to be selected for you. Okay, I'm going to click OK. If you right click on this shapefile of your basins and then go on, go to data, and then click on export features it's going to export exactly the shape file of this water the boundaries of this watershed only the watershed that is selected right okay so let's um, find the name for it I am going to uh, change the name to milk watershed and then click OK you can see that after a couple of seconds there is a um, item layer popping up over here it's called milk watershed the one that I exported right so I can close this right now and it is still selected right I don't want it to be selected so in order to actually do that you can go under edit 
and then click on clear, you can see the watershed is not selected anymore. All right, let's turn off all these basins. You can see the only one that is on right now is milk watershed, okay? You can change the color if you want or um, basically do whatever you want with it. I'm gonna select the black outline for now. Now, what I want to do, if I zoom out, you can see that the digital elevation model is very big, right? I'm only interested in the digital elevation model that is inside this polygon. So what I need to do is like using some type of cookie cutter. Um, when you are, when you have a cookie, large cookie, and you want to cut it into a form, you're going to put the cookie cutter on, on top of the large cookie and then cut it, right? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the boundaries of the milk watershed that we just created and cut or clip uh, the digital elevation model that we have, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna go under um, analysis and then click on tools. And then he right over here, I'm going to write clip raster. As you can see, I've already have it over here. So I'm gonna press enter. You are not gonna have this over here. So you need to write clip raster. And then the first item that pops up is clip raster. Select that. The input raster, we only have one raster over here. The output extents is going to be milk watershed. And then I'm going to check this box. I'm going to use the input feature for clipping geometry and then change the name to a name that I want to. Okay, so I want to change the name, this part of it, the last part of the name. I'm going to change it to MW underscore DEM because this is milk watershed DEM. And then click run you can see that after a while another digital elevation model pops up over here start from 0 to 2346 all right so i don't need the entire digital elevation model anymore so i'm going to check it off there we go perfect now you have this digital elevation model we want to save this in dot png extension file okay so basically we want to save it as an image that can be open and then we are going to convert that 2D image to a 3D image that um, your 3D printer machine can read. Before doing that, we need to do one step. So I want you to click on the symbology of your created DEM. And then right over here where you have percent clip, I want you to change it to minimum maximum. There we go. This is just one technicality that helps creating our P, uh, .png file. Okay. Now, um, next is right click on your newly created DEM and then go to data and we are going to export this raster, right? We are going to export this raster into uh, a PNG file. So this is the output raster that we are going to export. I'm gonna change the file. I'm gonna call it MW underscore instead of DEM, I'm gonna say PNG capitalized and then over here right now you can see that the extension extension of the file is dot tif tiff right and here output format is tiff i'm going to change this to png so as i change it to png you can see that here it changes to dot png perfect you don't need to change anything else except for you need to check the use use renderer over here perfect once you do that, you need to export it. After a couple of seconds, you can see that this is your .png. All right, now it is important to find this and locate this folder. So it's under C, my C drive, users, and then my username, documents, ArcGIS, projects, and over here. I'm gonna go to that folder and show you this, how this file is created. All right, I am in the folder, in the directory that I just showed you in ArcGIS Pro. What I want you to do is to create a copy of this. So I'm gonna just uh, copy this one and paste it right over here again. Okay, this is the copy version, right? And I'm gonna double click on it. It will use the photo, the, the default application, the painting application in your computer to open it, right? This is the 2D image of that watershed, right? What I want to do is get rid of the black areas over here as much as I can. So I'm gonna click on the edit. Your image editor might be different. I am using the default image editor by Windows. So, and I'm gonna crop this all the way to the boundaries of my watershed. 
I'm gonna crop uh, the bottom side and the right side and left side as well. All right, and then over here, I'm gonna save it. All right, this is gonna be saved, and this is the photo that I'm going to convert to a 3D photo. How can I do that? So every single pixel in this photo, as a, if I really zoom in, you can see that this image is kind of pixelated. Every single pixel in this image has an elevation attribute to it. So we are going to use a Java program to convert this 2D image into a 3D image to show us the elevation of um, basically this watershed, essentially this watershed that we selected. There is a link in the comment section of this video. I want you to use that link and download the Java program. Once you download the Java program, I want you to create a folder in your C drive and call it DEM2STL and put that Java program into that folder. I'm gonna do the same and show you how it looks like. All right, here I am in my drive C and I have created a folder called DEM2STL. And if I go into the folder, you can see that I have downloaded the Java program and the extension is dot, uh, .jar. Um, this is the, the engine that you're gonna run to convert that .png extension file into a .stl, a 3D printer readable uh, file. All right, the next thing that you need to do is to copy that .png file that you created, the photo that you created, and paste it over here. So I'm gonna go back actually, go back and copy this file that I created and go forward again and paste it into the folder that I created in my drive C. You can change the name of this. I'm gonna change it to milk watershed. Perfect. And the last step over here is to make sure that Java is installed in your computer. So there is a link again in the comment section of this video. You are gonna click on that and download the Java program and install it in your computer. Make sure that you know where you're installing it. It's usually under program files, Java, and the rest. Once you did that, I'm gonna show you what to do. It's usually in drive C, usually under program files, and you will see Java over here. Java, click on it, and then click on this bin. I want you to copy this file. Uh, notice that I'm, I have already Java installed on this computer, so I don't need to install Java. If you don't have Java installed on your computer, I highly recommend uh, doing this because without this, you cannot run the Java program, okay? So if you do not have, or if you're not sure if you have Java program installed on your computer or not, just take a couple of seconds and go to the website linked in the comment and install or update Java in your system and then continue. All right, once you're here, you can copy this link. Then I want you to go to the search bar over here and click on and search advanced. And once you type advanced, advanced system setting pops up. Click on that. Perfect. We want to add to the environment variables. We want to add a system variable. I'm going to find path over here and click on path. And then click on edit. And what I want to do is edit that. I'm going to double click to the end over here and paste that Java link that I copied. And then click OK, OK, and OK. This will help me to uh, run that Java program that I have in my folder. So I'm going to go back to the file that I had. It's over here in DEM2STL. Perfect. Now I'm ready to run the Java program and convert this PNG file into an STL file. In order to do that, we need to open up the command prompt. So again, under search over here, search for command prompt. There we go. This pops up over here. Open it up. There are a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, we need to navigate to the folder that this Java program is located. How do I know where it is? Again, if you click on this area, it will give you an address. Just copy this address and then go back to your command prompt over here. Right now, the command prompt location is in this folder. We want to change it. So here you need to write change the 
or CD, which stands for change directory, and then space, I'm going to paste what I copied. So we want to change the directory to this directory, and then hit enter. You can see that right now, the folder, the current folder, is the folder that we created. All right. The next thing that we want to do, we want to run the Java program. How do we do that? We need to uh, copy and paste what I have written in the comment, comment section of the video. So I'm going to do that and show you how it looks like. All right, here's that line of code that I copied and pasted from the comment section of this video. We're telling the computer that we're going to run a Java program that has the extension of .jar, and the name of the program that we're going to run is heightmap to sdl right over here, the same as this one. Now we need to tell the computer uh, what is the path to this image file, or what is the name of the image file. The name of the image file is milkwatershed.png, and notice that W and M, these are the capital letters. So I'm going to use the controllers on my keyboard and go to left until I'm right over here. And I'm going to delete this. And instead of this, I'm going to write the name of the photo that I have generated. It's milk watershed dot png. Perfect. The next thing that I want to do is find a height of the model. The height of the model tells you what would be the height of your watershed on the base that you have. Uh, we're going to change this later. I'm going to select a random number right now over here. I'm going to remove this and say the height of model is going to be, let's say, 10. And then the last uh, variable is going to be height of the base. So your 3D printed watershed is going to be over a rectangular base. This is asking you what do you want the thickness, the height of that base to be. Um, again, we're going to change that and see how it's going to change later. Right now, I'm going to select, again, 10. All right. Once you have written your code like this, then it's time to press Enter. Once you print Enter, it does some process, and you will see that there is a file called milkwatershed.stl popping up over here. I am actually uh, opening this file using the default Windows a program so if I double click on it you can see that the paint 3d which is a default window program opens up and gives me this one uh, this is a 3d view of that photo how do I know if I click on this 3d view and then I can navigate over here if you hold your right click on the mo on your mouse you can move it around and if I use the wheel on your on your mouse you can go uh, and see how it changes you can see that there there is a slight basically height to my watershed and this is the watershed that I printed but 10 was not a good number for the heights so I'm gonna increase that number so I get a better visualization of my watershed also the base could be a little bit thinner so instead of 10 maybe I select 5 for the base and instead of uh, 10 for height of the model I'm gonna select 40 so I'm gonna close this I'm gonna go back to my um, command prompt over here. I'm going to use the up arrow. I don't want to write all that code again, right? So I'm going to use the up arrow. If I do that, everything is over here. So remember, the first number is the height of the model. I'm going to do 40 space. The second number is the height of the base. I'm going to do 5. So press enter again. It does the calculation again, and it updates this file for you. Again, I'm going to open it. And this time, it will be more visible. Okay, good. I'm going to again click on 3D view. Now you can see that this time, if I zoom in a little bit, it is way more visible, the watershed that I created. Let me go back to ArcGIS. So this was the watershed, right? And this is the 3D representation of that watershed that we want to 3D print. If I zoom in, you can see some of the rivers over here that are created right over here, for example. Now I have this STL file. Let me go back over here. This STL file is the file that the 3D printer that you have can read, and then you can 3D print this watershed. I'm going to stop this video over here. Go 3D print this watershed. Once my watershed is 3D printed, I'm going to show you the final results. After 3D printing for a couple of days, this is the result. You can clearly see uh, the peaks and the valleys and the river or the water path streams 
in this um, sub basin or watershed that we selected.